stocks tumbled as big tech names weighed on the major averages yesterday, with the Nasdaq down nearly 3% on the session. The so-called FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google, have lost more than $250 billion in market value just in the past week alone. Joining me right now is Yardeni Research President and the author of Predicting the Markets, Ed Yardeni, who has done so well for so many years. And Ed, it is great to see you again. Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on the book. My Let's pleasure. talk about that in a minute. But first, sure. get your take on what we saw this week. Concerns over the regulatory headwinds right. coming for the tech right. sector. What would you do uh, well, with tech right you know, the, now? The market uh, has had a great run since March 2009. And it was uh, really melting up in January. And uh, now it feels a little bit like a mini meltdown. It's really just been a correction. And I think we're just kind of, kind of coming back down to the planet Earth, uh, recognizing that it's not straight up for technology. There are going to be issues, regulatory issues, and um, issues of whether some of these technologies can actually be achieved. So, so look at the backdrop then for us yeah. for investing. I mean, what would you do right now, and, and how do you see the backdrop? Well, for anybody who's been in this market for a while, I'd stay with it. I don't see any particular reason to bail out here. I don't see a bear market because I don't see a recession coming anytime soon. Uh, for anybody who's thinking about getting in, you're a little late. <laughs> yeah, stocks are not exactly cheap. So you may just want to take opportunities like this to uh, get into some stocks that are showing solid earnings growth. So is, is that really what you want to drive your decisions, the earnings growth? Because here we yeah. are, what, two weeks away from starting to get the first quarter numbers, yeah. right? The, the first quarter ends this week. And we're expecting S&P 500 earnings to be up 16% yeah, in the first quarter. That, That's well, a good number. Well, uh, you know, we had the tax cut at the end of last year. And uh, as a result of that, analysts uh, actually raised their numbers for earnings for this year substantially by $12 a share, basically. Uh, that's a really big, big gain. Uh, but it may actually be more than that because they didn't really have a complete read on how the tax cut would, in fact, hit earnings uh, positively. And I think that's going to be reflected in the upcoming earnings season. You think the tax plan has a long runway in terms of an impact on earnings and the broad economy? Well, look, uh, the, the immediate impact is uh, dramatic. Um, we're looking at... Uh, an earnings growth number of 16 to 17 percent this year, so it's great. So 18 percent higher year over year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that. that's well, that's what the analysts are thinking. They was a little, little bit optimistic, but I think uh, then we settled down to the norm, which is about 7 percent growth. Um, but that's good. That's what that's what the market typically does. It goes up with earnings. Tell tell me about investing in this market today. You wrote a book about it. You are legendary uh, in terms of looking at the backdrop and, and, and allocating money. Right. How would you do that today? Well, I, I think the uh, the key issue for investors always has been, at least the 40 years that I've been in the business, has been inflation. And so you really want to have a pretty strong feel of where inflation is going. And uh, there is a widespread concern that it's going to come back, but it hasn't. And I think there's very powerful forces keeping inflation down. In that case, um, I don't see a big increase in uh, bond yields. So if you've had some uh, dividend yielding stocks, I think they'll continue to do well, though they're not cheap, obviously. Um, and I would uh, focus, continue to focus on growth. I think we are looking at a technology driven world uh, where the innovations are just extraordinary. You, your book is called Predicting the Markets based on your 40 years in the financial sector. Um, so you're, you're talking about the lack of inflation, even though we are seeing some moves in wage growth. I mean, you would imagine yeah. wage growth happens when you have a better economic story. Right. And we're talking about 2.7% growth. Right. Well, uh, uh, there is this Phillips curve uh, theory that says when the unemployment rates are very low, the wage inflation should go up. And it kind of makes sense. Uh, however, that's not the whole story. The other story is price inflation itself can feed back into keeping a lid on wage inflation if you have tremendous global competition which we do uh, if we have tremendous technological innovation which we do amazon being one example of how technology is impacting lower inflation and then aging and demographics around the world i think is another force keeping inflation down so um, I know there's a lot of concern about inflation coming back, but I don't think it is. So, so you, you've got a lot of big ideas in this book. You, you also take into account that this is an Amazon economy, which is keeping inflation in check. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, I keep uh, following what the Fed and other central banks are doing, and they, they're still kind of stuck in this idea that, that they should be able to get inflation higher. But at, at what point are they going to put up the flag and say maybe inflation isn't just a monetary phenomenon? Maybe there are other forces keeping it down. 
All right. So tell us right now how you want to recommend investing today, mm -hmm. because you're looking not just at the growth story. Right. You're also looking at where valuations are best. Right, right. Well, uh, everything is expensive. Yeah. Um, so I think you really do want to be uh, where the uh, earnings growth is. But I think you want to diversify and still have um, stocks that have been growing dividends. I mean, that historically, that's really been the best way to make money over the long term in the market is invest in good companies that are ra raising their dividends. And there's plenty of them. Do you worry about the current upset around trade and tariffs? Well, um, I worry about it. I think uh, to the extent that the market worries about it, I have to worry about it. Um, I think globalization is here to stay. I think there's just too much inter interdependence to suddenly shut off world trade. Um, and I don't really think this administration wants to move away from free trade. I, I really don't have a problem with fair trade as long as it is free trade. And I think um, this administration is uh, using a lot of threats to make trade fair for the United States, yeah. and, and it's working. It Let, seems, let's face it, apparently. we got deficits, trade deficits yes, across the world. Yeah. Uh, pretty significant, actually, $800 billion, yeah. uh, when you look at uh, right. collectively speaking. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in terms of the policies, then you think the markets are getting it wrong? Well, I think the markets are have um, sort of a life of their own. It's uh, not just about the fundamentals. It's also sometimes about the internal workings of the market. And I think we're just seeing a, a consolidation and some of the profit taking and some of the high flyers uh, coming back to reality about what can and can't be achieved. So I, I think uh, once if we consolidate here for a few more months, that's a good thing because then the market will mosey along with earnings. Are you expecting 3% economic growth this year? I, I am. Um, I, I think the, the frustrating thing for our economy is that uh, all the stimulus that this administration is throwing at it, some of it does get leaked through the trade deficit, and I think that's why there is this uh, f pressure to do something about that. Uh, but I think we could grow 3%. It's, I can't see 4%. I don't think the demographics and productivity numbers are going to make that number work. Not even a couple years out? Not even a couple of years out. Uh, the demography is such that the labor force growth is extremely slow. I mean, back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, uh, a good part of the, what I wrote about in the book is um, the baby boomers flooded in, women flooded in, and, the, and uh, we had uh, tremendous uh, participation rate uh, increases. But now the baby boomers are getting older, and millennials just uh, aren't... Uh, you know, they're just not providing the labor force growth. And that's why the participation rate is where it is. That's correct. Yeah. Ed, it's great to see you. Thank Thanks you so much. Thank you very much. Congrats on the book. Check it Thank out. You. Predicting the markets. Ed Yardeni.